Look at me recording in vertical mode. In general, you've probably heard me complain about people recording stuff in, in uh, vertical mode, but I've also have done a couple of vertical videos when they make sense. So before you jump down my throat for having vertical video and being a hypocrite, there are times where you want to. For example, I'm filming my phone's screen, which is in vertical mode. If I was to record this on a standard uh, portrait mode, you would lose resolution. I'm trying to get you the best resolution for this video. So even if you're on a desktop where your screen is in in um, landscape mode, you're getting better resolution. Otherwise, I would have to, it would be squishing things down and cropping things out. We're getting the best resolution here. So just, just uh, don't jump down my throat because I also hate vertical video when it's used improperly, which is 99% of the time. Anyway, today we're looking at, this is a fresh install of Lineage GIS uh, or GSI on uh, my old Motorola Power G2021, I think it is. Uh, and I just loaded it up. I installed Termux and Termux API. Those are two packages you're going to need for what we're doing today. Termux is a nice little shell environment. It's a terminal with a bunch of, with a package manager and everything to do 99.9% .9 of the things you would do on a desktop Linux machine right here on your Android device. And then we also have to install the Termux API package. It is important you install them both from the same place. Uh, otherwise they can't interact with each other, which they need to do. So if you install Termux from Fdroid, make sure you install Termux-API package from Termux as well. Or if you use the Google Play Store, install them both from there. Or where you get them, make sure you get them both from the same spot. Otherwise they won't interact with each other. Once you have them both installed and you start up Termux, you're gonna have to do PKG install termux-api to access the API. I already have that installed. Once you do that, what the what the termux API application does is it allows termux to really interact with the Android interface. Termux by itself does all your shell stuff, but if you want to access, for example, your Android clipboard to either put stuff in the clipboard or retrieve stuff from the clipboard, you're gonna want API installed. If you're gonna to wanna to access your cameras uh, on your device, you're gonna want the Termux API installed. Or today, we're going to do dialog boxes. And uh, yes, yeah, so once that's installed, you should have a command called Termux-dialog. Right, run that, and by default it gives you a blank term, uh, uh, blank uh, dialog. Okay, this is going to be kind of like Zenity or Whiptail or one of those easy to use, uh, simple dialog boxes that you would use on your desktop Linux device to get simple dialogs. But Termux has it all built in, so you can write shell scripts and create icons and links, or just run those scripts however, and you can get a GUI dialog. Uh, and right now we're looking at Termux dialog, but you can also do notifications on your phone or little toaster pop-ups, which we'll look at in a future video. But there's a lot of options for this, just like you get with Zenity, or like I said, Whiptail. There's a few other ones out there. But let's go ahead and get started. So just running that gives you the blank dialog. If we do dash T, it will give you a title. So we can say, hello world. I might do a lot of typos, gonna type fast. Don't worry, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna stress myself out about typing these properly as far as the strings. Hello world. And then we have this uh, little box we can type something in. I can say, hey, back at ya. And uh, if I hit okay, you can see it gives us uh, Xcode. And then it also gives us the text that was typed. So you can retrieve the text someone typed that way. Uh, so let's do that again. Let's clear the screen. We'll run that command again. And instead of hello world, we can say, what is your name? And then when we, oh, forgot the uh, closing or opening quotation mark there. And now we get this and I can type in Chris. Great, perfect. And I get a response of Chris in a nice JSON format. Uh, but we could also put a placeholder in that text area. So I can say, enter name here. And when I do that, now we get, what is your name? And then down here it says, enter your name here. And then I click on that. And it's just like a placeholder on like an HTML form. There you go. And we get that that output that we can grab uh, and do something with, with our script. Uh, you can also do confirmation boxes where you just want yes or no. So for example, uh, instead of just typing this, instead of uh, Termux dialog, the default is that input box, but we can do confirm. And we can say, instead of what is your name, I can say, do you, Again, I typed something wrong. Want to continue. I'm not going to go back and fix that because this video is going to be long. Bunch of typos right there. And uh, 
We can hit enter there and we get a dialog box that says, do you want to confirm? By default it says confirm. Again, we can say yes or no, we'll get that output and then we can do something with it later in our script. And then we can also give dash I and say, and that's the title of our box up here. So we can just say, instead of, do you want to continue? We'll just say continue. Again, typos. I'm not gonna worry about the typos. I'm gonna keep saying that. Uh, would you like to continue? And now we say continue as the title, and then we'll say, would you like to continue, yes or no? If I click no, it will say no, and then you can exit your script or do whatever you want to do. You can also do date dialogues. So again, termux dash dialog, and we can just say date. Again, we can give it a title. We can say dash t, what is the date, or what is your birth date, or whatever question you want to ask. Boom, it's going to open it up. It's going to give you a nice little calendar. Uh, and it's going to default today's date. So we already know what today's date is. So we could do something like that, but we can say instead of what is the date, we can say, what is your DOB for date of birth, okay? And then we can give it a default date. So dash D, and we can say 04, 09, 1975. And now it will say, what is your DOB for date of birth? And it, it didn't. It didn't... Uh, default to that date. It should have. Did I type something wrong? Dash D. Mm -hmm. well, as you can see, when you check a date, it gives you the date. Uh, oh, I look, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, but it does not change the default date displayed. The following change the default date if none is selected. Oh, hmm. So it doesn't default to that day. But if I don't select a day, okay. Ah, good. Good thing I wrote notes on my notes. And I'll link to all my notes uh, of all these examples uh, below. That doesn't change the default state, uh, date shown. It will set a default date. If you hit cancel, it returns the default date. That's what that does. See, it's great to have notes and I'm sharing them with you in the description of this video. What about radio buttons? So we can do, again, termux dialog and we can say radio for radio buttons and then we can say dash t please select a user and then we're going to do dash v for our options and then we're going to give options separated by commas so i can say john comma jack comma and jill and you can give as many as you want. I'm sure there's probably a limit, but it's probably a lot. And when you do that, uh, you get an error because I typed something wrong. Let's see. Uh, oh, that shouldn't be an R. That should be a T. There we go. So it says, please select a user. And then you can select. It's a radio button. So it just lets you select one. And whichever one you, you click, it will return that. Uh, it will give you the index uh, of the item and also the text. Uh, OK, let's look at this. How about a sheet? OK. It's similar to a radio button, but slides from the bottom and instantly enters on selected. No OK button. OK, so with our last example, again, I was just reading my own notes. Uh, we select one and then click OK. If we do the same thing, let's run the same exact command. But instead of radio, we're going to say sheet with two E's, that is. Uh, it gives you a dialog down here at the bottom. And as soon as you select a name, it chooses that. So there's no OK button, but it returns the name, uh, this text that you selected, and the index. Great. Now let's look at Spinner. Uh, so same exact command. We're going to leave the title the same, the same uh, options, but we're going to say Spinner. And now we get a Spinner dialog, uh, which is basically like a drop down box here. But it's called Spinner. I'm not really sure why it's called a Spinner, but that's what you get. So you can uh, choose it. That's probably good if you have a, a long list instead of it all being in one dialog. Uh, okay, another option. Oh, how about passwords, right? You want to enter a password. You don't want it displaying on the screen. So we do the same thing. And then we can do a default input. So we don't have to give a type because it's going to default to an input. And what we're going to do here, uh, we can give it a title. Please enter a password. And then we can put a placeholder if we want. We don't have to, but enter password. And then we just do dash P. And the dash P option tells us that it's a password. So if I come in here and start typing, it's going to act like a 
Android password where it only shows you the letter that you're typing as you're typing. Okay, but of course it returns it in plain text in your script. Uh, so let's see. How about a multi-line input? So let's go ahead, go to the last one. Uh, I'm just going to leave all that text, but instead of dash P, we can do dash M. So we're not giving it a type, so it knows it's default to input. And when I run that, well, now I can type in this and this, and I can give it a multi-line input. And when I click OK, it returns that in a string with the new line uh, backslash n, so you can split that up in your script and do stuff with it. <laughs> uh, how about entering a number? So uh, on Android devices, you know you have your 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 keyboard. That's what this is called. Your touchscreen keyboard down here, which can change depending on the type of input you give. If you're writing something in HTML, you can say that it's a numeric input, and it will default to your numeric um, options, your numeric pad on your. Uh, on your keyboard. I don't know why I keep forgetting the word keyboard. Uh, so here we can just say, please enter a number. And we'll just say, enter number. And then at the end, we're just going to say N for numeric. And when we do that, we come in here, we click here, and it defaults to your numeric touchpad. Uh, so that way they can enter just a number. They don't try starting to type. It's easier for them to type on this, and it's it's just great. I just love I love that you can on machines like this default to uh, a number pad. And uh, let's see. And we have number. And then the last example I have is selecting the time. So we're just going to again say termux dash dialog, and this time we're just going to say the type is a time dash t for title. Because you, you don't have to give it a title, but it's usually a good idea. We'll just say select a time. And there we go. We have your nice little, you know, it's going to default to whatever clock type system that your phone already uses. So it's what the user is familiar with. We can do AM, PM. We can change the hours. We can change the minutes. If you want, you can bring up a keyboard, I guess. Oh, and then you can type it like that. Just like any other application. So there you go, and then it's going to return the time that you entered in, uh, I guess, military time with the colon, which is a little interesting. But um, yeah, uh, there's, there's probably more options, but those are all the, the basic ones. Again, I'll put a link in the description of this video to all these examples. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Uh, it's great to be able to write scripts uh, that are specifically for an Android device that gives the user, it, it makes your shell scripts more user friendly on a touch screen, small touch screen device like a phone. So maybe you'll use this. And of course you can always, uh, with Termux, add, uh, uh, scripts to your home screen with icons, or you can have a shortcut list. Uh, that's all stuff that you can do with if you install the Termux widget app. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Uh, and in a future video, we're going to look at doing this sort of thing, but trying to make your script so it's compatible across um, different devices. So you can write a shell script once that uses dialogues if a GUI interface is available that will work on your desktop Linux or your Android Linux, or if there's no GUI interface, it will default to the shell. Thanks for watching. And again, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description as always. Have a great day.